All right, so what we're going to do is recreate and try to explain the Charlie Charlie challenge, challenge. <laughs> thing <laughs> that's going around on Twitter. So let me show you what I got here. Right here, I have the piece of paper. Let's focus. There's two pencils already balanced on it, and it says yes, yes, no, no. Okay. So let me set that up there. You can see it now. And hands are off. Anna's gonna ask questions. Um, you're supposed to open with Charlie. Charlie, are you here? I know. Okay. <laughs> so go so, ahead. You can start talking, and we'll see if it moves. Okay. So Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Charlie, will you come visit? If you're here with us, put the pencil on yes. Thank you for being shy. I just want to note too that I, my hand here, I'm covering my mouth and nose because I am breathing and I don't want to influence it. So we'll just try again. Maybe Go ahead. they didn't hear the first time. So Maybe Charlie, pass. Charlie, are you here? Is anyone else here besides Charlie that might want to talk? And I just want to note, because I know Kenny's camera, it's focusing in and out. That's nothing... Strange yeah. or weird, his his camera does that a lot. If you watch his podcast, <laughs> hey, <laughs> he needs a better camera. <clears throat> no, it's, it, yeah, that's because it's, it's seeing the two different lights and it's trying yeah. to focus on something. But right, yeah, it has nothing to do with what we're doing. It does it all the time. But no, this doesn't work. I've done it. I, I've sat here. I can do it. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Anybody here? Do you prefer this or the Ouija board? I have a few of those. Nothing. Yeah, we might as well go with it because it's been going around today. Um, people are concerned that this might be a portal to Zozo, just like they believe that the Ouija board is a portal to Zozo ever since this Indiana House thing came about. So, I mean, I'm game to ask if you're game to ask. If... Uh, how about Zozo? Are you here? Do you want to talk to us? Zozo, Zozo, are you here? Nothing. I what's going to happen. I wonder what would happen if we let a little bit of outside influence mess with it. So if we do that, and... Like if you ask another question, and we can see if outside influences. Now let's see. I moved. Yeah, it. yeah um, I just moved. I do have a fan behind me, and I was blocking it. No, it just so moved I again. I out of the way. Let's see if it. Uh... Turn to your other side, Kenny. Face the other way. It's when it was moving. Yeah, it moved twice, but it was it was right when you. It's actually, you know what? It's off balance now. It's actually touching. Again, this is really hard to actually get it balanced. Because once it starts shifting, there we go. It's really over. There it goes. All right. There it goes. So Kenny's got like a little small fan about this big around right behind him. It's what would you say, probably five feet behind you? Uh, yeah, it's about when, yeah, five feet. It's right. Ugh. When he clears the path, it actually allows it's the right air to go through. Yeah. yeah. It's on the shelf because it's freaking hot in here. Um, but, yeah, as long as it's pointed over this way, I can feel the air coming through, and it it's touching the pencil. But even if we take that out, and if I just stay here, and breathe. 
I can get it to move. So very easily, if somebody was sitting across from you and they were actually trying to get you to speak to Charlie and they barely breathe, do you think that they can move it without the recipient noticing that a, a person across from them is breathing? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Because it's it's I tried the first video that I did that I posted up, which was only like it was like 12 seconds or something like that. I had my phone above it and I was sitting here going back and forth, like literally blowing on it. Right. I'm um, making it obvious, but I was off camera and you couldn't hear me. You couldn't see me. So as long as I was off camera, it was easy to do. But even just being right here and I'm going to reset this again because it went off balance again. Because once it goes off balance and one end is dragging, you have too much resistance going on. So if I'm just sitting here and I'm talking, if I just breathe out normally, I can get it to move. So basically, though, if we think about each one of these videos that have been happening, there's a lot of factors that we're not seeing in each video. And if you have a four inch, six inch fan five feet behind you and it's affecting that, who's to say that fans aren't on, windows aren't open, there's somebody sitting across from the table barely breathing. Um, all these things you think could easily affect this trick. Right. And there's the other thing they have to consider is um, I've been having trouble, not really trouble, but it's, it's a task get, to get these things to balance on each other. And because of that, there's, there's a very small surface area to which these two pencils can contact. Okay, so when you're talking about regular size pencils and you're trying to balancing, balance each one on top of each other, they, there's, oh, geez, about, I would say like an eighth, an eighth of an inch of mm -hmm. surface area that's actually contacting this. So it's really easy to... To manipulate it, there's really nothing there at all. It's it's when you have um, uh, I don't I don't know like a real good example. But when we go to like museums and you see these things that are really balanced, like large mm -hmm. machinery, and you can just touch it with your finger and just lightly push it around. That's kind of what we're dealing with here. The, the the balancing act that's going on is so easy to manipulate that not only can you breathe on it to move it, but if you bounce on the table, if you stomp on the floor, the vibrations alone will cause this thing to move. Right. Um, but it's just, I think the whole idea is just, it's, it's uh, a fad going through with kids. Kids are having fun with it because they don't understand the science behind it. They accidentally breathe on it. It moves. It freaks them out. Mm -hmm. So that's it. They scream. They put their videos up. Their friends do it. They do the same thing. They freak out, and that's it. So there, there's no rational thought behind it. It's just it's a game. It's like a, um, an earlier episode of, of the podcast we do, me and Lou, I went out to Gettysburg, and we talked about something out there where they were doing a trick about a smoking ghost, that if you lit a cigarette and you balanced it on this tubular railing, at, at a, a sax covered bridge and wait for it and ask, ask the ghost to smoke it, the cigarette would turn just like these pencils, like exactly mm -hmm. like these pencils. And that's what was happening. You were balancing a cigarette, which is a round uh, cylinder, onto a tubular railing. The contact area between the two is very, very tiny, and any little breeze that came by will move. Right. Another thing that's similar about like what you're talking about is no matter how well you balance it, the two ends are two different materials. You're not going to get an evenly distributed weight no matter what because either way, that eraser is going to be heavier than the tip of the lead end of that pencil. Right. So you're going to end up having some sort of balance with physics going, you know, to, show you. to encourage it. I put, I'm going to put this up here. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see. There it is. That mark right there, mm -hmm. that's the mark I put on it to balance it. So when you look at the whole pencil, the mark's here. That's not halfway. So you have you definitely have to put more of the pencil on this side of the balancing because of the weight of the eraser and the metal cap here. Right. Um, so yeah, as you said, it's already the balance is already offset. So you're going to have um, I forget the, the the term for it, but this is a weighted end. So it's going to help it if it was perfectly balanced might be a little different, but because you have a weight on the one side, 
any little breeze is going to make it make that weight want to swing more. I'm wondering what's going to happen if we were to take that eraser end off of that, if we'd still get the same effect. I, I think so. I mean, it's not that much, but I I think so. Well, it's plus, try. It, plus it's smooth. Yeah, plus it's go. really smooth. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's try it again. Let's see. <laughs> Why We're not? so scientific. Oh, my God. This is in the interest of science. Damn it. Now i got to figure out how to balance it. You need a new mark. All right. There we go. So, it's balanced. Let me yeah. Take the fan off. There we go. All right. So it's balanced. There you go. Yeah. Plus these these pencils are lacquered, so they got two smooth surfaces moving as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a, a polished uh yeah, lacquered as you say. So it's it's smoother. It's going to it's going to slide really easy. I don't see any reason why this would be blamed on a demon or a spirit or Uncle Charlie or whatever, you know, Zozo. What? What is Zozo? I, I, I only know because of Ghost Adventures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that tell you? <laughs> well, no, I was told. I was told today that um, Charlie is a Mexican demon. Oh. Yeah, Mexico. So we should contact Lou. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bandito may have an inside um, source here that can help us. But, I mean, seriously, like, what does uh, – they don't know geographics, I mean, right? Or I wouldn't right. assume – that's assuming that they are here, but, okay. Exactly. So. It's all assumptions. And this is just uh, uh, another game that it is – it's – I think it was called Fake Lure. I think they went off of it because it really – it only looks like this this legend dates back to January of this year. So somebody made it up and put yeah. it out there, and everybody's playing with it, and, and now the kids are going crazy with it. So, But there is nothing behind it. There is nothing. There's no demons. There's no ghosts behind this. It's simple science. It's it's balancing right. and, and air currents. That's pretty much it. And really, if a demon wants a hold of you, it doesn't need a pencil. It doesn't need a Ouija board. It doesn't need a pendulum. It doesn't need any of this crap. It's going to come if it's... Assuming that they're out there, they're going to come regardless. They don't need any kind of divination tools or any of that yeah. crap. I, so. I, I doubt. I I would hope that they're not as dramatic as humans, and would just you know get to the point. If you're going to possess me, just do it. You know, yeah. don't play with my pencils. <laughs> I don't yes. get that. <laughs> do what you want to do. Leave the pencils alone, please. Yeah, like uh, you know what? I was going to possess you, but what I really need you to do is draw on a piece of paper. And set these two pencils up. Just bear with me. I know it's a pain in the ass. Just do it anyway. But only number two pencils, please, because I'm a very picky <laughs> yes. De- demon. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so that's it. Um, I, I, I'm good. Are you good? I'm good. I'm All right. good. Cool. I think so, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced, too, that it's it's just a game and silly. So just for the record, you're not feeling any portals or anything opening? Or anything? No. Um, I okay. checked. I do have a, um, a a portal detecting device that I made up. Um, no, it's really just a pen. <laughs> yeah, that's a but, pretty damn cool pen. Isn't it? Look, you push the button, and it's like, boom. Holy crap. Your handle like that. But no, absolutely nothing paranormal happening here at the home of the skeptic. <laughs> All right. There All right. it is. Good. All right. We're done. <laughs>